So then, how do I set up feature definitions? Now, this is the most common workflow. First of all, you're going to link to the native feature library. And this is a little bit different uh, for MX inroads and GeoPack, and so we'll show it all three ways. And once you've linked to that, then you're going to review and edit the items that are created. And then if you choose to, you can reorganize the structure of the items that were created. Uh, this will apply more to inroads and MX than it does to uh, GeoPack uh, because GeoPack already uh, can have a structure of categories. Uh, and then the last, then you'll uh, configure that DG and lib file for use across your entire organization. Okay, so I've started up a, a new drawing here. So setting up features DGN. So I'm just in the MX session and I have some DGN libraries loaded but I've actually made sure that I've got rid of my standard uh, MX road DGN library with uh, the feature definitions in there. So first thing I'm going to do is in the active drawing have a look at the feature definitions. We can right click in Project Explorer and we get the option to link PSS file. So I can go and pick a style set uh, that we want to import. So in this instance, let's do a simple survey. So this goes through, imports all of the features. So simple survey is made up of both linear and point-based features. So we can see here the symbology, subtly difference between a linear and a point. So we might actually want to choose to group this in a different way. So rather than just grouping it as MFW simple survey. The features don't really need to be in a container for that. I could actually go and break them out and say new category of point features. Oh, new category linear features. And so I could simplify this down using the standard control and pick my point features, fairly simple in this instance, and cut them and put them into a category, point features. Again, I could have put them underneath the, the simple survey PSS if I want to group them in that way. Or, or I'm just happy to actually take all of these and put them into the various groupings. So I can go through and group them um, in many different ways. I could just get rid of that now and actually decide that I want to import multiple features into a single definition list. If I now link in, say, my MX Road just as an alternative, what we can do here again categorization. If I want to categorize, if I want to leave it under a category called MX Road, just to simplify it, I can add a new category under there called Carriageways. Add another one called Shoulders. So I can go through and group the appropriate features, pick those, and put those where I need them to be. And obviously I'd created shoulders, so I'll put these away as well. So we can start to refine the list and, and make the list a much more manageable one. So I could continue to do that, but if we just have a look at the carriageway edge and have a look at the properties that get assigned by default. We've already talked about um, in previous recordings that the native style gets applied by default across plan and profile. So it's picking up on carriageway edge and we'll draw it in that standard, in this instance, a yellow continuous line in all of those modes. So I can map it through, as I've done in other examples, to change out for a 3D style, i.e. a visualization mode, not a drawing production mode, and set it onto a none as a category and go and pick up on a uh, a feature definition which is pavement inside edge and pick up on the line style representation I want to use there. 
So we can go through and make adjustments in that way. Uh, if I wanted to, I can select all of those features. If I have element information open, I can select all of those features. And as we've got all of those selected, it gives me the common value that I've got available to all of those. And so I can actually go and make a change on all of them at the same time. I can go in linear, in this instance, pavement inside edge and make that change to all of those features at once. So we've looked at linear and point features that are coming from star sets. But what about surface features? So by surface features I mean the cross sections, the long sections where we're cutting through a surface or the terrain models themselves, triangulation models. So again, we can link a PSS here, and in this instance, I will just pick a cross-section PSS that we have loaded. But we can go and pick a, a, a triangulation PTS to help us create the feature definitions for and the style representations that we might want to use to represent surfaces. So if I open the cross-section PSS, what it does, same thing as with the point and linear features. It goes through, looks at the uh, string identifier that we store in the style set, sees that it's a cross section, long section or triangulation string, and generates those features and these are all feature, uh, surface feature definitions. And if we have a look um, at design, we can see that it points us through to that design feature and picks up on the native style for design. At the same time, because it is a surface definition, we may actually want to use it elsewhere. So what we also do here for element templates is actually at the same time as we're importing, we create element templates based on the uh, header information in the style set. So if I just open up the style set information, style set editor for cross-section PSS, and it takes the, the header table information, say for design, for the feature type, looking at it being a section string, and it takes the bi-level properties that are utilized here, and then creates element templates for me as a starter for 10 available to pick as a microstation style because these are these are surfaces that we might draw in NX so we can define standards for uh, surfaces and cross sections and, and profiles and so on so I can go and pick and look at design we can see it's gone to design drawing in, la in, in red um, or as uh, as built it's gone to the level as built so we're drawing um, and combining the surface definitions and creating element templates on the fly. Uh, and this helps us in regard to uh, transitioning from the MX workflows uh, and drawing typically f via input files and, and uh, draw code when we get into the terrain world with open road we can actually utilize and leverage those existing styles if we're using them uh, by creating element templates uh, or you can create element templates and map through to them manually yourself. Once we're done in creating our um, feature definitions and, and perhaps I would actually say possibly one import per DGN library um, what you would need to do, all you'd need to do is file, save as and then store as a DGN library. So if I change the mode to DGN library I can just setting up features DGN library. So once you're happy with uh, all the changes that you've been making to your DGN library um, what we need to do is make sure that the file goes into the right place so what we should be looking at doing is saving the DGN library into the correct location so if we open up your workspace configuration many places that you can put this but the path that you want to be looking for is MS DGN lib list so you could save it to your workspace or to another location that you define um, and so save it into the correct location one of the paths that uh, are supplied or your own custom path